Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week I'm taking a look at the various charging solutions for people who shoot pre-charged airguns. But first up, we're joining Richard Saunders as he makes a bag of rabbits and corvids. Uh, right, well, unfortunately, we're right in the middle of the uh, the coronavirus um, pandemic uh, still. Uh, but fortunately, the lockdown restrictions have been eased a little bit. You're now allowed unlimited uh, uh, unlimited exercise. You're even allowed to mix with someone outside your family in, in, a, in an open space. And my mate Kevin is down with me tonight. Uh, he's on another part of the farm, and we'll catch up with him later. Um, now, the venue is a, uh, a fruit farm. They grow strawberries, raspberries, blueberries here. They also grow uh, plants and shrubs for the garden industry. And rabbits are just a constant nuisance here because they eat the crops, they eat the, flat, uh, the plants, uh, and they also nibble through the irrigation pipes. Um, so they're going to be on the hit list for tonight. Now, in addition to that, the farm next to us is a sheep farm. Uh, it's another one of my permissions. And the, the sheep there are lambing pretty much all year round. And crows and other corvids are a constant problem because they attack the very newborn lambs and they'll even attack uh, pregnant sheep, uh, pregnant ewes that fall over and can't get back up again. So if any opportunities at crows, magpies come along this evening, um, then we'll have a go at those as well. Right, well the gear I've got this evening is, uh, I've got a, a Daystate Wolverine R, it's in the uh, Forester laminate stock which is really nice. Um, it's a 177 12 foot pound rifle, uh, side lever action, very very smooth. Uh, what I have to say about the day set rifles is they, you know, they are expensive, they're sort of the, at the top end of, of air guns but you know, if you take your sport seriously and you're really after the, sort of the best kind of rifle then I don't think you can beat these. Um, now on top I've got a, an MTC uh, Cobra scope it's a 3 to 10 by 40 magnification uh, and that is held on with uh, some sports match mounts uh, as ever and the only other piece of kit to mention is that I've got a, um, a side shot uh, phone cradle here which enables me to hopefully catch um, some footage of shots taken down the scope if you like. Now my mate Kevin, um, as I said he's on another part of the farm, um, he um, has also got a day set this evening, he's using a a 2.2 calibre 12 foot pound Daystate Huntsman Regal uh, and he's also using an MTC scope on that as well. With rabbits and corvids potentially on the menu this evening, Rich has plenty to go at. It's just a matter of getting loaded up and into position ready to pick off the pests, which are very accustomed to human disturbance on this busy farm. That's good, off to a good start. I've just literally driven down the lane and it's the first uh, place that I've stopped at. Parked across the lane and I've got a good view down this hedgerow and one has just come out of the hedgerow, only about 30 yards away. Uh, got a nice stable uh, platform to shoot from and uh, yeah, cracked him right in the side of the head. Um, he leapt into the bushes a little bit but I'm pretty sure he's down uh, and that'll be the first one in the bag. That was a miss over the top, but thanks to his ultra quiet setup, Rich gets another chance. Oh. 
Well, that's got to be the, the luckiest rabbit alive. Um, there's one came out, uh, only a youngster, and uh, I took the shot. And for some reason, I went way high over it. it must be closer than I realised. Um, and then, but that shot startled out a second rabbit, which was slightly bigger. So I gave him some hold under and hit that one, and he went over with a nice headshot. Um, and the first rabbit was still there, so I took a third shot, aimed, un aimed with some hold under again, and I managed to miss him for a second time, and now he's cleared off. This rabbit won't show its head properly, so Rich is making squeaking and clicking noises in an effort to make it stand to attention. Well, I think that must be the deafest rabbit known to man. Um, it came out in the longer grass about, uh, there's actually, there's two. One a little bit further out uh, that I couldn't quite see, he was behind some thistles, and then another one a little bit further to the left, closer to the hedgerow. And uh, I squeaked and I clicked and I whistled and he wouldn't put his head up. Um, I was thinking I might have to send him a text message or something, but eventually he put his head up high enough for me to take a shot and um, just over the top of the long grass and uh, cracked him with a nice clean head shot. So that's another one down. Rich's mate Kevin is also getting a few shots with his Daystate MTC combo, but he's got competition and it's making the rabbit skittish. No wonder that small kit was running around. I uh, only spotted the fox uh, further in the distance and I thought it was actually going to come and sit by the side of me. Well, I've not seen that before. Um, I took the first rabbit a few minutes ago and while I stood up I could see another one coming across from the polytunnels. Um, ran round it a few times. Uh, there was a piece of blue rope which you'll see in the film. Um, I, I couldn't quite get the angle so I eventually got the angle. Um, the rabbit stopped, presented itself. Um, nice clean headshot and yeah, went straight down. This scavenging magpie has homed in on one of Kevin's shot rabbits and is about to discover that there's no such thing as a free meal. So it's now 
tomorrow, if that makes sense. Um, I've come back down uh, to the same venue the next day. Uh, now the reason I've done that is um, I found myself struggling a little bit with the magnification of the scope I had yesterday. Um, it was a 3 to 10 and some of the longer range shots I wasn't quite uh, comfortable with. So I've come down with a, a different gun. It's another day state. It's a Huntsman Regal this time. Uh, it's a bolt action rifle. Uh, again, it's regulated. Uh, this one's a 2.2 and it's an FAC uh, rated gun, about 30 foot pounds. Now on top of that, once again with sports match mounts, uh, is a, an MTC Cobra F1, which is a 4 to 16 magnification. So it just gives me a little bit more magnification. And because it's a first focal plane uh, scope, then I can use the same aim points regardless of the magnification that I'm using. So hopefully we'll get a few more uh, rabbits with this setup. Well, that was another nice uh, clean shot. It's a small rabbit, um, probably only about half, three quarters grown. But you know, on a pest control job like this, um, then you can't really afford to be fussy. Um, so they've all got to go, unfortunately. And now Rich gets his chance at a magpie. It's just a question of using the right amount of holdover to compensate for the range. Well, I'm really pleased with that. A, um, a magpie just came down to peck up one of the, uh, the rabbits that I shot earlier. Um, it's quite a way off. Um, I've been kind of pinging around with my rangefinder to know the various different distances. And um, that magpie was probably, I don't know, getting close to 50 metres away, so I gave him a couple of mil dots of holdover. Um, yeah, and bowled him right over with what looked to be um, a, a really clean headshot. Well, that's it for, the, uh, for this evening. Uh, really good couple of sessions, probably got, I don't know, a dozen rabbits or so. Uh, and a couple of magpies which is always a bonus uh, they're all picked up uh, and uh, it's starting to get a little bit uh, darker now starting to lose the light so i think i'm going to call it a day Richard Saunders getting on top of the rabbits and magpies there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the various charging options for PCP air guns. Check out the great subscription deals for print and digital versions of Airgun Shooter magazine. You won't miss a single issue, even if you can't get to the shops. I get asked a lot of questions about charging gear for pre-charged air guns, mostly from people who are planning to make the jump from a self-contained spring gun to a PCP. Now their questions tend to relate to the sort of kit you need and what it will cost to buy. So what I've done is I've rounded up the three main options from John Rothery Wholesale so that we can take a closer look at them. Right, first up we've got the manual stirrup pump which is the simplest and most affordable option. It's very easy to transport 
And because you don't need a shop with a compressor to fill it up or electricity to make it work, it's pretty much always ready for action. You just need to be prepared to put in the work. Although this model has actually been cleverly designed to make the task as easy as possible. This pump is the Hill Mark IV. It's made in the UK, is recognized as being one of the best manual air gun pumps available and retails for £169.99 with the dry pack kit. Now it does require some very basic assembly, but it comes with extremely clear instructions and couldn't have taken me more than two minutes to put together. Now I do think it is worth paying that little bit extra for the dry pack kit, which filters moisture out of the air to ensure that your air gun's internals remain in perfect working order. All you do is connect to your air gun and get pumping. Using the right technique makes a big difference. You need to bend your knees, use the weight of your body, and use the full stroke of the pump. This pump can go to over 230 bar, although you will notice things getting harder as the pressure increases. My top tip is to go for regular, small top-up charges rather than going for one big fill. The clearly marked gauge shows you how high the pressure is inside your air gun cylinder or bottle. Once you reach the recommended fill pressure for your air gun, undo the bleed valve to release the pressurized air from the hose and then you're ready to uncouple from your gun and get shooting. Next up is an air bottle, which is basically a scuba tank. Now the downside with this option is that bottles are pretty bulky and of course they will eventually run out which means that you have to have access to a shop with a compressor to refill it. Now the good thing with this option is when you do have air in your bottle you can quickly and effortlessly refill your gun with clean air with the turn of a tap. This Bisley bottle has a 5 litre capacity and you can expect to pay around £180 for the kit. And remember, you only need one bottle no matter how many pre-charged air guns you have. It's a nice manageable size and has a maximum fill pressure of 300 bar, which amounts to a lot of refills for your average air gun. Now it comes supplied with a boot to stand it up on, plus a specially designed valve, which incorporates the all important gauge a really nice comfortable handle and the hose that you attach to your gun's filling probe. Finally, we've got a compressor. Now it's the most expensive option, but unlike a bottle, you don't have to rely on shops for refills and you could always club together with a mate to buy one. This is the Hill EC3000 portable air compressor which retails for £798. At 75 decibels, it's comparatively quiet, plus it's very well made and pretty compact. It looks like a sophisticated piece of kit, but it's actually very easy to use. It comes supplied with lubricants, and once you've topped them up, it's just a matter of connecting the hose to your air gun's filling adapter. Once that's done, you just have to plug it into the mains connect to your air gun and it's ready to go. After switching on, you use the control dial to set the pressure to whatever fill is correct for your air gun. Maximum fill is 300 bar and you can choose whether the display shows bar or PSI. Once you've selected and confirmed the pressure, charging begins at the press of a button. As I said, Maximum fill is a hefty 300 bar, and this compressor can fill an average air gun cylinder from 100 bar to 250 bar in about 90 seconds. It cuts out as soon as it reaches your preset pressure. After that, it's just a matter of slackening off the bleed valve to release the pressure and then uncoupling your air gun so you can get on with the shooting. So, that's the three main charging options available to shooters who use pre-charged air guns. Manual stirrup pump, air bottle and compressor. They all have their pros and cons 
and the final choice will ultimately hinge on whichever option best suits your needs and of course your budget. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.